Hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Inkwell Gamers Podcast. Today we are covering the steel cards from Ursula's Return in order to finish our set review. If you have any questions about the parameters we are using for our grading scale, you can refer to our Instagram at Inkwell Gamers, or you can check our Ruby or Amber set reviews from this set as well, in which we outline the grading scale there. So, with that being said, we are going to hop right in. Dana, tell us about the first card that we have. Actually, before we jump in, I do want to kind of set a reminder that we're doing all the non-vanilla cards. We just feel like there's not really much to analyze with cards that don't have abilities, so we're skipping those in case you're wondering. But, with that being said, the first one that we're going to cover is Aladdin Brave Rescuer. Inkable 3 cost 3-3, three, three, quests for 1 you can shift it by discarding a location card and then has crashing through. Whenever this character quests, you may banish chosen item. I gave this one a B. I think it is basically a Benja. However, it fits into the whole Emerald Steel discard decks because it's a Floodborne. So yeah, I, I think it's just a role player, you know. Yep, it fits into the Bucky discard decks. It is probably, as a card, a little bit worse than Benja because Benja's ability happens immediately and you have to quest with this one. Benja also quests for two, whereas this quest for one. But Benja does not curve as well after Bucky, so this is a B. The next card we have, well, I'm actually going to talk about this for a second. So the next card that I'm going to talk about is Argus, the Cyclops. Two cost inkable for one. It is a vanilla card that quests for one. Why do they have to do my man dirty like this? Like, he is a giant Cyclops with one willpower. How in the heck could a Pascal take out this thing? Pascal, the stupid little lizard... <laughs> can banish this giant cyclops that's ridiculous i can tell you're passionate about this <laughs> it's ridiculous the, ah, the sizing on this just doesn't make any sense it is very uh it's not it, it doesn't make sense <laughs> they did him really freaking dirty although if you think about it so they did all the other titan characters and all of them are like way better than this and if you think about it in the movie like they send all the titans but him to yeah. olympus and they're like just we don't really think you're that great to come with us to Storm Olympus. <laughs> he's he's obviously less strong than the actual Titans. He's just like this big Cyclops, but still, like, what the heck? Like, he smashes buildings, I get it. And then you... Ex <laughs> well, Pascal's evasive. He, 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 look how tall he is! He, he just snatched uh, Pascal out of the air. <laughs> I'm dying right now. <laughs> all right, get off your soapbox and actually right. do the next one. <laughs> all, right, all right, so we have Ariel Determined Mermaid. It is a three-cost inkable, two-four, the quest for one with I Want More. Whenever you play a song, you may draw a card, then choose and discard a card. I'm going to give this one a D. There are so many good three-cost characters and this is not one of them. <laughs> like, like if you're doing the whole song thing, there are just way other efficient characters. You want the singers or the songs that actually... You need a critical mass of singers, so you want, like, the Gastons and the two-cost Ursula. I mean, or you have the three-cost Ariel. The three-cost Ariel as well, the one-cost Cinderella, and there's just not enough room to fit this card in. You don't need like the loot ability because you're already playing a whole new world for the card draw it just isn't a very good card i originally think i overestimated it i did give it a c but only because it is repeatable in a steel song deck but if you're playing a steel song deck you're playing the other ariel on turn three you're playing the singer so i'm gonna bump mine down to a, a d i think but perfect Moving on to our other Ariel, we have Sonic Warrior. I freaking love this card so much that I will cry if I ever open up an Enchanted. But nonetheless, um, six cost, inkable, three, eight, quests for two, shifts for four, and it has amplified voice. Whenever you play a song, you may pay two ink to deal three damage to a chosen character. I think this one is an A. It is obviously pretty powerful in the Steel Song decks. You're not going to see it in every Steel deck, though, which is why I didn't give it an S. I think it is limited to your Steel Song, obviously. But 
I think it could be used to shift on curve after your aerial singer pretty nicely. So you play singer aerial on turn three, you get your song, and then next turn you can shift and you don't even really need the singer aerial anymore because she's a singer five. And if you just shift this on turn four, then it's a six cost sing like or it's a, a singer six essentially. So um, eight willpower is extremely hard to get rid of and it poses a decent questing threat. And I like the fact that it doesn't require her to have to sing the song and it doesn't even have to require any characters to sing a song. You can just play it and the ability activates. So I think in a Steel Song deck, this, I wish I played Steel Song for this card, honestly. And right. yeah, A. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a B. So the, the issue with the curve that you were outlining is that just giving up your three cost character is like a, a pretty big cost board presence wise. And a lot of the times if you shift this and then sing a song, like you can't pay the, the two ink to use its ability and you just want as many singer threats on the board as possible so you can play all your songs for free and then use your ink for other things mm -hmm. that being said i could see it as like a two of in that deck because i do think it can be a reasonably powerful threat against a lot of decks mm -hmm. i mean i get it i'm not i guess i'm not even insinuating that you would have to shift and sing with her right away if you just shift on turn four and quest you can get away with that because chances she, she's are they're, gonna live, yeah. she's going to live. Yeah. And then maybe the next turn you would sing a song or play a song or whatever. And then you would have enough ink to do it. So, yeah. But I, I mean, I do see, I didn't think about that downside, but I still like her a lot. Yeah. She's so, awesome. Yeah. All right. Next we have Beast, Thick Skinned. Three cost inkable, two, three, quest for one with resist one. I mean, this is. Probably still just a D. D for me too. I feel like just having res resist plus one isn't strong enough to be considered like a really good card. But <clears throat> nope, there was yeah. like the prince from previous sets that was a one three that had resist one, but it had body card in quest for two. Yeah, like that card is so much better. It has bodyguard, so it protects your other things, and it quest for more. The once strength added just isn't enough yeah that actually is a card that i did mention in describing a card we're gonna get to later so i'm excited to talk about that one but nice. in the meantime we have chief Fu imperial advisor uh zero five inkable three cost quest for one and has overly cautious while this character has no damage he gets plus two lore I gave this one a, I wish I could give it an F, honestly. <laughs> I don't like how the fact that he has zero strength with no de-incentivization to not challenge him. I don't like how he doesn't have that. Like with Curse Morfolk and Cheshire Cat, they don't have any strength, but there is something that makes your opponents kind of stop and think about whether they do want to challenge that character or not. Whereas he has no reason not to challenge him. Like this is so stupid. <clears throat> yeah, they only have to really challenge this character to you know, banish it because as soon as he has any damage on it, he is really no longer a threat. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to give this one a D as well. For sure. All right, next we have Chimpow, Imperial Soldier, five cost inkable, four, seven, quest for one. Sorry, sorry. I should say Chin Po. Chimpow is the very <laughs> strong Pokemon, and that is very easily to, to mix up in my head. Chimpo, Imperial Soldier, five cost inkable, four, seven, quest for one with Bodyguard. This card looks like it really shouldn't be that great, but it's kind of good. I'm going to give it a B. Yeah. Um, it just, seven willpower is so much. It just survives everything. It, as bodyguard, it protects all of your stuff very well. Mm -hmm. And it has enough strength to where it banishes a lot of the stuff that uh, that's challenging it. So this one is really hard to get through. And if you're playing like emerald cards with it it does a really good job at protecting your flins and curse merfolks and what have you so i like it yeah i gave it a b as well Have, being an inkable five cost it really isn't that unattainable to get to as far as like you know on curve but it also doesn't get medusa or maui'd so it could definitely prove to be useful and like you said with the emerald 
decks where you do have very vulnerable characters that die very easily. I like that. I actually played against someone that played this card and I was like, dang, I did not see this coming mm -hmm. and I did not think it would be as difficult for me to have to focus on. You yep. Know. Yeah, I've seen this in, uh, I played against it in Chicago against a Emerald Steel deck and it was pretty annoying and then I played, or I've seen people play it in Sapphire Steel because once this thing is in play alongside like a Cogsworth, oh God, it's yeah. really hard to get off the board. So yeah, I, I like this one, but it's just not a very good threat by itself. Yeah, for sure. Next we have Donald Duck, Buccaneer, Inkable 4 costs 3, 4 quests for 1, and has boarding party. During your turn, whenever this character banishes a character in a challenge, your other characters get plus 1 lore this turn. I'm giving this one a D. I actually... I think the three strength isn't enough to get rid of a lot of things by himself. And his text is that he has to banish another character. So it just seems like it wouldn't happen that often. <laughs> yeah, this character just doesn't have the stats. If they see it in play, they can play around it relatively easily. It doesn't really pose a threat by itself, so they can kind of just ignore it. Three strength doesn't do enough by itself. Four willpower means it's probably going to get banished a lot of the time as well. And like I said, it's kind of easy just to play around. Whatever deck you're playing against, like, probably can just avoid this. If you're playing against one of the Sapphire decks, they just don't have to quest into this. If you're playing against a purple deck, then they can just quest and bounce their characters. Uh, if you're playing against any steel deck, they have songs that can take care of this pretty easily. It's just not very good. Yeah, I agree. Next, we have Hercules, Beloved Hero, 6 cost, Inkable, 6, 5, Quest for 2, with Bodyguard and Resist 1. I'm going to give this one a B as well. It is kind of similar to Chen Po in that it is pretty good at protecting your characters. This one does get Mauied, which means it might be a little bit worse, mm -hmm. but it also has Resist 1, so it's better against other Steel decks because it doesn't get tanked, and it does quest for two so that means it's just a better standalone threat so i can see this one getting play a little bit i gave it a c plus b minus and that's probably where i should be honestly yeah i i think my biggest thing is that it does get maui otherwise yep. it is pretty tough to get rid of if you don't play against maui we did see other characters like this like the prince and steel and obviously the prince was a smaller body but that one really didn't seem too much play. So that's why I am kind of leaning towards a C. But I do recognize that it is going to be quite difficult. It poses a decent questing threat. And then having Bodyguard and Resist is pretty freaking annoying. So Yeah, they do pair really well together. Yeah, so that's why I kind of leaned towards the B too and landed on the fence. So there Absolutely. I am. <laughs> Next we have LeFou, Opportunistic Flunky. What an odd name. Mm -hmm. uh, Inkable, three cost, two, three, quests for one, and has I learned from the best. During your turn, you may play this character for free if an opposing character was banished in a challenge this turn. Kind of funny how he always just kind of, he's like on the bad side, but just kind of rides on the coattails. Yep. Of like the more, you know what I mean? It's very thematic. But nonetheless, I gave him a D because I think his stat line and questing amount is too low and like or not good enough essentially to want this character on the board whether he's free or not and i think if he quested for two or was a three four instead maybe i'd consider him but i just feel like for the stats that he has i don't i don't like it so i don't think it's playable i'm gonna give it a c there are definitely gonna be times where you do get to play this for free and like i imagine just having a free two three that quest for one is probably really strong the issue is that sometimes you probably have to play this thing out and it's just terrible but yeah yeah i'm just gonna give it a c like i think in some aggressive decks or board focused control decks it could see play just because having a free body 
it's hard to evaluate how strong just having a free character is, I think. But it's quite limited, too. It's not it just ba- banishing a... It's not just banished. It's banishing a challenge. Yeah. And so it completely negates any of the damaged songs or actions or whatnots that you do. Yeah, I think this thing would be ridiculous if you could, like, boom or fire the cannons and then play something mm-hmm. and then play this after it. But, like, even still, if you just banish a card on turn two or three... Uh, you can spend your ink on something, and then, like, if you have, like, two of these in hand, you get to play, play both of them for free, and that would be really strong, but, again, it's kind of situational, and it's a 2-3 for in Quest for 1, so it only has so much impact by itself, so, yeah, that's why I give it a C, probably a C-. minus. Alright, next we have Wing, Imperial Soldier, is a 3 cost, inkable 3-3, three, three. That quest for one with full of spirit. Your hero characters get plus one strength. This is probably just a D. Like, we have Lumiere and Ruby that does this just way better because it gives all your characters plus one strength and it costs two. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I, I just don't see ever playing this. It's probably just way too limited. Yeah, I gave it a D as well. I mean, we said earlier how... Some of the support characters getting plus one isn't worth it. And then this is even worse because it narrows you down to just your hero. And, I mean, even even looking at some of the cards, too, where you would assume something would be a hero and it's not. Like, the next card we're getting ready to talk about, Louisa Magical, she's not a hero. <laughs> Whereas I feel like she should be. That being said, they're are a lot of hero characters. <laughs> I know. I, I do think it's the most abundant. Yeah. But there are some that just... They just don't make sense. Like, I don't understand how Louisa is a hero, but Piglet is. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Look at that Piglet. He's clearly a <laughs> hero. Know. We'll get to him. We'll get to him. <laughs> With his colander hat. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, I just... I gave it a D because it's just too conditional for me, I think. But yeah. Speaking of Louisa, we'll just move on to her. Rock of the Family, an inkable three cost, two four quests for one, and has I'm the strong one. While you have another character in play, this character gets plus two strength. I gave this one a C minus. I don't think she's horrible, but I don't think she's great either. I'm not sure if having a character that's a four four sometimes is good enough to take up the three cost slot. I mean, I don't I know. I think it's going to be a four four a lot of the time, most of the time. <sighs> I know. You're... Okay. You're right. You're right. I feel like there's a ton of other great three-drop cards that get played with Steel Decks right now, and this... They would... I feel like those cards would get played over this one. And they do. I don't know. Like, playing, like, a Smee into Louisa just seems like you have just such a great board presence, but it it just doesn't do enough. I don't somehow a three cost four four is just not very good that quest for one if it quests for two i think this card would probably be great yeah for sure but it just doesn't put enough pressure on by itself i agree so yeah i'm gonna give it a d it's it's i think it's really close though yeah for sure um so next we have magic broom aerial cleaner is a two cost inkable two three quest for one with winged for a day during your turn this character gains evasive This one's a B. It is not a particularly powerful card to me, but it is a very good answer to one of the best cards in the format, which is Diablo. Mm -hmm. So I like it. Its body's not bad. It can challenge the evasive characters. And in the matchups, it's not good. It's just inkable. So it's fine. Yeah. I gave it a B as well. I think, obviously, it it can fit into a broom deck, but it doesn't have to rely upon being in a broom deck. It's basically like a two cost Sapphire Corella, but the stats are flip flopped. And this is so much better than this Corella, is better, too. Yeah, because it gets rid of Diablo, but doesn't trade with it. Yeah. So, what, yeah, one of the issues with Corella is that sometimes they just sing, let the storm rage on, and then just kill your Corella, whereas this survives that. So, yeah. It, It's a lot better. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Moving on to our other broom, we have Brigade Commander. 
six costs inkable, two six, quest for two has resist one, and army of brooms. This character gets plus two strength for each other character named magic broom you have in play. With that being said, this one does partially rely on a broom synergy in which I would give it a C. It gets medusa pretty easily and it's expensive, so. Yeah, it only gets medusa if you don't have any other brooms in play. You're right, you're right. But like, ugh. this probably just needs a little bit more. Uh, if a quest for three, I might be more interested. Or if this costs five, I'd probably be a lot more interested in it. But it just doesn't do enough by itself. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the broom payoff cards like Yin Sid or Mickey Mouse, which we will talk about next, are just cheaper than this. So this comes into play after. So it doesn't... Mm -hmm. It's it doesn't slow. really work. It's right. too slow. Yeah, I agree. I so agree. it's probably a C minus. I'm going to give it a C minus. So next we have Mickey Mouse, Playful Sorcerer, is a five cost inkable three four, quest for two, shift three, resist one. And it has sweep away. When you play this character, deal damage to chosen character equal to the number of broom characters you have in play. I'm going to give this one a C. I want to love this card. Mm hmm. But in my mind, there are only two good broom characters. So, like, its ability just doesn't quite do enough for me. Like, you have to have probably two or three broom characters out in order for it to banish something. Mm -hmm. And if you only have eight in your deck, that's just not super likely. Yeah. I gave it a... C. I... It's essential for the broom deck. Otherwise, it's not getting played in non-broom decks. So it's applied in niche applications, and that is why it is a C. That being said, they are printing a lot of brooms, and I think this card is reasonably... You know what? I won't give it a B. Like, it is specific to broom decks, but they're starting to print more powerful brooms. Uh, there are two in this set that are good, and I think as long as they keep printing better brooms, at some point this card will be good. Then... That makes sense. I get you. Yeah. It, it has a pretty powerful effect. If you get like a three cost broom that is really good too, then it'll probably regularly do two to three damage. And then I think it's worth your five cost. Mm -hmm. so. For sure. Next we have Mickey Mouse Standard Bearer. Inkable two cost one three quests for one and has stand strong. Whenever you play this character, chosen character gains challenger plus two this turn. I gave this one a C because I think it is a worse crab, but I do recognize it isn't in the same color as crab, so maybe it could be useful in niche applications. Um, the only thing that sucks is it's just entering play, not also leaving play like a crab has, but I don't know. If you're not playing Amethyst, maybe, but like you said, you, okay, never mind. D. Because you said earlier that there's a lot of, the, the two cost slot, there's a lot of competition. So you got to be pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to give this one a, a C because... Well, then I'll bump it back up to a C. <laughs> you gave me a look, so I got self-conscious. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. <laughs> I was just interested in your uh, logic. So I think this one can be good because it can kind of help your like one-cost characters trade to their two-cost characters on the draw. And then it becomes kind of a good shift target because its ability is you know, used for the previous Mickey Mouse that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. That being said, it's it's just not, like, a particularly powerful card, so I just don't think it can be higher than a C, but eh, it's probably, like, a C-. minus. All right, next, we have Philoctetes, No Nonsense Instructor, four cost, inkable, two, three, quest for two, with two abilities. The first is you gotta stay focused. Your hero characters gain challenger plus one. And then it has Shameless Promoter. Whenever you play a hero character, gain one lore. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of heroes. This card doesn't have great stats by itself, but uh, there is like a combo deck with this that can just let you win in one turn. If you have Pride Lands and Stitch Rockstar in this in play, you just cycle through your deck with all your one cost hero characters because there's so many of them yeah. that you kind of just win. So that's interesting. I don't know if it's good enough outside of that though. I mean, it's possible that it could be, 
but I just think it's a little too weak to play on curve on turn four unless you're doing something really powerful with it. Yeah, this is a moment where I'm glad that something you've said is similar to something I say because that no, that basically is telling me that I'm learning. And I, wait, did you give your grade? No, I'm going to give it a C. Okay, I gave it a C too. <laughs> but I did point out in my notes that I think it would be paired with another color in which you know that you have a lot of other hero characters like Amber. So I'm on the right track. But even in Steel, we have a pretty good amount of good hero characters getting played. You have Robin Hood, you have Beast, you have Tiana, Cinderella, Stout Hearted. So I think if you pair that with something like Amber, you could get a pretty good combo with this, like you said. And otherwise, it would it's too niche. So that's why I gave it a C. But could be, could be good. Could be a good build around card. Yeah, it'll take some experimenting to like find the broken version of that deck but i agree with you yay <laughs> moving on we have piglet sturdy swordsman uninkable five cost three five quests for three with resist one and has not so small anymore while you have no cards in your hand this character can challenge ready characters oh little piglet <laughs> i i I gave this one like a B minus, C plus. It is uninkable and it dies to Maui and Medusa, but three lore and resist one is a decent threat in itself. I don't know how much the second ability might trigger, but Tiana got played against me in Chicago and because I was playing the Steel Emerald discard deck, her ability activated and I couldn't do anything about it. So I don't know. I, I feel like this could be sneaky sneaky good i wouldn't play like four of though so i don't know b b minus yeah i'm gonna give it like a c plus i think you could see play it is kind of powerful but it's competing with robin hood and beast and even up the curve like tinkerbell cinderella like you said i don't know if this is better than that card mm -hmm. so it has a lot of competition, and the fact that it's uninkable probably just means it'll get beat out. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So, yeah, I'm going to give it like a C, C+. All right, next we have Raja. Raja. Yeah. <laughs> Royal <Getting> fancy there. <laughs> I, I, I did get fancy. Uh, Raja, Royal Protector, 4 cost, inkable, 3, 4, quest for 2 with steady gaze. While you have no cards in your hand, characters with cost 4 or less can't challenge this character. Okay, so I'm going to give this one a D. Its stats are just whatever. It Its ability is just way too conditional. Mm -hmm. um, and it just isn't that powerful by itself. Um, four or less is actually kind of a lot, though. So that's a little interesting just because it doesn't get Madam M. Fox. It doesn't trade with the GOAT. It doesn't trade, like, a lot of stuff just can't challenge into it if you don't have any cards in your hand. But, like, if I don't have any cards in my hand, I want something that could, like, put cards in my hand to help me get back into the game. This, yeah. or something like Tiana, which is really limiting for your opponent. This one just quests for two. Yeah, I give it a D as well. I really don't know how much to say about it. I mean, you pretty much covered mm -hmm. everything I was feeling about it, so we can just move on. With that being said, next we have Raya, Unstoppable Force. Seven cost inkable, three six, quest for two, has challenger two, resist two, and you gave it your best. During your turn, whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge, you may draw a card. I like this one. I don't think it's absolutely great by any means. I gave it a B. She, because she's expensive, honestly. But I can see it getting played in maybe like a Sapphire ramp deck because obviously you're getting to her quicker. Um, she can't get Mauied. And I don't know, what with the Challenger too, that may, she would still get medusa right? Yes. Uh, so maybe B-. minus. Yeah, I'm going to give this one like a C-. minus. I 
the card's cool, but as far as seven cost skill cards go, you're competing with Cinderella Stout Hearted, mm -hmm. and that one is always a 5 5, doesn't get Medusa at a quest for three, and it can challenge ready characters. So, if you sing a song, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, it has that upside. I think that card is just a better version of this, unfortunately. It can also shift, so it has that upside as well. For sure. All right, next we have Yao, Imperial Soldier. Four cost, inkable, two, five, plus for one, with challenger plus two. Just not enough stats. It's like a worse version of that Jafar that you played from the first set. Mm -hmm. And if you're just worse than a card from the first set, then you're probably not going to see any play. So, <laughs> That's yeah, so it's, a, it's a D. <laughs> That's so true. D for me, too. I just feel like challenger isn't a good enough ability on its own to see play. Similar to support, I guess. But moving on, we have Avalanche. An uninkable four cost action where you deal one damage to each opposing character. You may banish chosen location. Ugh. I give it a D. It's uninkable action, so it can't be repeated or sung. And to only deal one damage isn't enough when you have grab your sword in the same color. And yes, it banishes locations, but I feel like we don't see enough of them to have to worry about them. You know what I mean? Like... It's just not... You also have Rise of the Titans in Steel 2, which does banish locations and items, and it's inkable and cheaper. Like, this one is just a worse version of Grab Your Sword and Rise of the Titans. But what if I told you that this was also an answer to Bucky? Oh, yeah, to each opposing character, so it is a... Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think this one is like a B-. minus. Like, you can't play very many of these. You can play one or two, and it's just like a four-cost answer to Bucky that can sometimes hit their coves or a Queen's Castle or a McDuck Manor. It is like it's it's pretty narrow and it's not inkable so yeah you can just never play more than one or two of them mm -hmm. but I think it does have a place and it is situationally very good but it's also situationally terrible which is why it's like a B minus. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sometimes it does nothing sometimes it does everything you want to do uh, but yeah it's just like a B minus. Just can't play very many of them. All right, next is I find them, I flatten them. It is a four cost inkable song. Simply banish all items. What do you think, Dana? <laughs> very on the on the nose there. Right. C plus, B minus, because I feel like I could see people trying to play this song because it is inkable and a song, but it might just be maybe the Sapphire decks trying to play it against each other while... The other decks that are more aggressive are just faster and cannot race. So it could be like a way to set your opponent off, your other Sapphire opponent off tempo. Otherwise, like as a Steel Emerald player, I feel like I'm just going to try to be faster than the Sapphire deck, honestly. Yep. I think Steel Song could play this because they have Ariel that can find it. It's inkable, so it has that flexibility and it does really wreck like the steel sapphire decks it makes their aerials really bad it makes their flavor shams not great you wouldn't be able to do this in a flute deck because obviously it would banish your item too yeah you you cannot do it if you are playing flutes but it might be nice to still have that option if their items are a lot better than yours so uh yeah it's like a c plus it's not a great card but it'll probably see some play at some point yeah Moving on, we have One Last Hope, an uninkable three-cost song where chosen character gains resist plus two until the start of your next turn. If a hero is chosen, they may also challenge ready characters this turn. What did you think of this one? I'll, I'll send it to you first. <clears throat> I think it could be played. I think it's like a C. Just having an ability to challenge ready characters is pretty good. And it also protects your character when it's challenging. It's a song, so you kind of get, just get to play for free. Like, it's pretty narrow, but in a format full of Bucky's and Aerials, I think challenging ready characters could be pretty important, and this is probably the best option to do so. See, I didn't originally consider that. I originally graded it as a D because it's just... I, I feel like with it being uninkable... I didn't really see that you'd be gaining too much from it, but I actually didn't consider how you could challenge like 
Bucky or something else like Cogsworth or something that would otherwise just sit there unexerted the whole time. Yeah. So I, I do see I do see the potential to use this one. I'll bump mine up to a C. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if cards like this get played a little bit more just because challenging those really annoying ward characters is extremely powerful. Getting that Prince John out of out of play, getting Bucky, you said Cogsworth and Ariel, those are all extremely annoying characters. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this card's stock ends up going up a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so next we have the Mob Song, 10 cost and equal song as seen together 10. And it says deal three damage to up to three chosen characters and or locations. So you get to deal three damage to three different targets. Uh, it's it's just probably a D. Like, you have Grab Your Swords, which is way more efficient. That deals two. Tinkerbell, which is an incredibly good character. It only does one, but it also has the challenge ability. And it's a character, so that makes it a little bit better. It's not inkable. Mm -hmm. And ten is a lot. So, yeah, I just don't see a place for this one. I gave it a D as well. I feel like if you're going to be a 10 cost uninkable song, I feel like you got to be a little bit more powerful than this. And it doesn't feel like it, it doesn't match what it should be worth. I think. Yeah. So, I mean, if it did match what it was worth, it would probably be too good though. So <laughs> it, would, it would just be very swingy. So I'm glad this one's not that great. Yeah, that's true. Next, we have Triton's Decree, an uninkable one cost action. Each opponent chooses one of their characters and deals two damage to them. I gave this one a C plus B minus because I have seen some people try to play this to work around Diablo or Bucky. And the fact that it is only a one cost, you could do it pretty quickly. So if your opponent whether they play Diablo on turn one or they just have Bucky. You could play this pretty early before there are any other characters for them to choose the lesser of the two evils. You know, if they just have one of them on board, then it would obviously be that one. So it is okay at dealing with Bucky. The issue that I think with this card is that if they play like the one cost Diablo, then you kind of just have to play this to deal the two damage to the one cost Diablo. Otherwise, they just get to shift onto it and play a Bucky, then you have to discard a card, whatever. But, like, if they have a Bucky and Big Diablo in play, they'll just choose whichever one they think is the best for them to keep, right? Yeah, that's what so, I was saying. So, but, <laughs> but when you play these cards, you don't want them to have a choice because then this card just isn't doing what you want like yeah. if they're like okay i guess i'll just get rid of bucky then their diablo is probably just gonna stick around for a while and draw them a lot of cards and then if they are like okay well you're a removal heavy deck so i'll get rid of the diablo then the bucky's gonna stick around and make you discard a lot of cards so i don't know it i don't think this really ever does what you want it to do i would often just play fire the cannons over it so i have the choice when i want to yeah. like if you draw this later in the game and then they have a bucky in play and like a a beast or something mm -hmm. then they're just like okay i guess i'll get rid of the bucky or i made you discard three cards whereas if you had fire the cannons you could at least hit the beast and make them not be able to draw so, yeah, I don't like this one too much. It's too conditional too much of the time. So I'll give it a C-. minus. All right, next we have Fortisphere. It is an item, one cost inkable with resourceful. When you play this item, you may draw a card. And Extract of Steel, you can pay one to banish this item. Chosen character gains Bodyguard until the start of your next turn. This is like an S in Sapphire Steel but like a D everywhere else, but it is one of the best cards in Sapphire Steel. So, and that's, that might be the best deck in the format. So it's probably just like an A or something because it's one of the best cards in one of the best decks. I gave it a B. I feel like it's a solid role player for the item deck and it is inkable and cheap and you basically get the card back with the card draw. So I just gave it a B. Yep, it's just another thing to banish the Flavorsham. I... 
don't know why they decided to print more of those, but <laughs> as if Flavor Shame wasn't good enough. Yeah. Next, we have Imperial Bow, inkable two cost item, and has within range, you exert it and pay one, where you then give a chosen hero character challenger plus two and evasive this turn. I give this one a D. I'm not sure how much it would get played. I don't even know how. I don't know. I don't know how to explain myself other than it's just my gut reaction when I look at it. Yeah, I'll give it a C. It's kind of like Maui's fish hook. That one does one or the other, and you have to pay like three ink to do that. Mm. This one gives Challenger plus two and evasive for only one ink. It's cheaper to play. That being said, Maui's fish hook can also be free if you just have a Maui in play. So it has that upside. This could see play, but it's very minimal. Yeah, that's true. So the next card we have is RLS Legacy's Cannon, a three cost inkable item with Baboom. You exert this to pay two and discard a card, deal two damage to chosen character or location. It turns all of your cards essentially into Baboom's. What do you think? I give this one a D. It's I, a D. I, yeah, I, here's the deal, like, Baboom's are getting played right now, but I think you don't need to call upon them as often as you would think. It's like, if you see it at the right time, great. Otherwise, there are so many other times where it just, Baboom just becomes ink. And so the fact that you would play a more expensive, uninkable card, and you have to pay ink and disc, like lose out on your card advantage to do the, literally the same thing. I just, I don't see you needing to have to repeat it so often to want to play this card. Yep, this card's terrible. Uh, Baboom's good because it's two cost, so it's relatively efficient. It is instantaneous. It's inkable. This one is not good because it's so slow and you have to pay five ink in order just to get Baboom's effect in. Like, you're using this card and another card because you have to discard a card and play this one, so it's just so much worse. Yeah, I agree. Moving on to our last two cards, our locations. We have the Wall Border Fortress first, Inkable 4 cost, Will Power of 8, Move cost of 2, and has Protect the Realm. While you have an exerted character here, your other locations cannot be challenged. I give this one a D. It does not gain you lore. It has an expensive move cost, and the ability is dependent upon you having a character there. And the chances of you playing a super heavy location deck to have other locations, I just, until we see decks that have a crap ton of locations in, I don't see this one getting played. If someone can figure that out, that's great because then you can have ones that passively gain lore and your opponent just can't do anything about it. But... We don't have that, so therefore this is a D. <laughs> I mean, they could also just banish the exerted character that's there and then, you know, go after the other ones that are actually important. Uh, yeah, I agree. This one's a D. It's so slow, so conditional. I don't like it at all. So the next one we have is Thebes. The Big Olive is a two-cost inkable location with a move cost of one, a will power of seven, and if you can make it here... During your turn, whenever a character banishes another character in a challenge while here, gain two lore. Uh, this one's probably a D as well. Again, a uh, location that situationally gains lore. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like a hard one for your opponents to play around. And yeah, it's just kind of slow. I don't like this one at all. Yeah, I give this one a D as well. I just feel like the fact that it only activates on your turn and the character has to be there in order for you to gain two lore, that's way too conditional for you to just gain a measly two lore. So I think it would be a little bit better if it could occur on your opponent's turn and they challenge as well. But because it only can activate on yours it's just i don't know it's stupid <laughs> yeah so like locations are really hard to get rid of but if they're just not good like you have to be queen's castle or mcduck manor level good in, in order to see plays still so you have to actually pose a real threat by yourself if you're a location and neither of these two can do it i agree 
Well, that kind of sucks that we're ending on a somber <laughs> note, okay. but we are now officially done with our entire set review of Ursula's Return. All of the colors are completed, so check. But we hope you guys found value in our set review, and we appreciate you for joining us today. I think coming up, we're going to dive into the next thing we normally focus on in each set, and that is a starter deck review with upgrade suggestions. So that is something that we will do next time. Otherwise, if you missed any of our other inks, please feel free to go back and check those out, and we will catch up with you guys next week. Have a wonderful weekend, guys.